Were there clear the previous video about uh, il passato remoto e l'imperfetto? Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Mirko and I'm your Italian tutor. And today we are going to continue our past tense series. And we are going to learn il passato prossimo, one of my favorite tenses. Why? Because as I mentioned before, I'm from the north. So we use il passato prossimo basically all the time. Okay, so I can classify me as the master of this tense. And it's my duty to make you fall in love with this tense. So, il passato prossimo is still a past tense, so it describes a past action. Theoretically, it should be a recent past action or it should have a connection to the present tense. Like in English with the present perfect or the present perfect continuous. I said theoretically because in practice I would use il passato prossimo basically to indicate any past action. If you're in the street of Milan and maybe you hear i romani hanno fondato Rome with this Milan accent and you think no sorry sir you should use il passato remoto because this action happened centuries ago. Good, good observation but because there is always a but in Italian it depends. So if you say i romani hanno fondato Roma what you are saying is this is the legacy. So the, the action that started in the past you can see it actually in front of you, right? However if you say i romani fondarono Roma basically what you are indicating that this action happened many centuries ago, right? In brackets you have the time, it can be 200 years ago or 300 years ago, okay? But you have pointed out that that action happened there in the past, okay? However, I wouldn't dare go in there and correct him because, you know, people from Milan, they can be quite snobbish. So for... <laughs> for <laughs> For everyone from Milan, I really do apologize. But I have a funny story, and this is the reason why I say that. So I'm from Lecco, okay, which is 50 kilometers from Milan. And, and every time I go here in London to restaurants or bars and I meet people from Milan, because we are from Lombardy, so Lombardy, okay. And I say to them, ah, wow, you're from Milan, I'm from Lecco. This is the look. Okay. Do you think that we are from the countryside? You come all the Sunday to our beautiful lake, so... Shh. Let's go ahead with the rest. <laughs> but I like to share stories, actually. Um, what is the tricks of this dance? It's just the mechanic behind it. And do you remember our beautiful whiteboard? Because now we are going back there, because I need it. Are you ready? Let's go! And we are back to the whiteboard. You know, I usually use English as a reference point just to make it easy. So in English, the present perfect, you're going to have subject pronoun, auxiliary verb, past participle. In Italian, we are going to use the same structure. Mm -hmm. Where is the tea, Mirko? Um, there is no tea. I mean, it's slightly different. But because we are Italian and we like to complicate things. But I promise it's going to be easy, okay? So we have our subject pronoun, io, tu, lui, lei, noi, voi, essi. Auxiliary verb. In Italian you are going to have to, essere e avere. And there are specific instructions when you're going to use avere and when you're going to use essere, okay? So 80% of the time you are going to use the auxiliary verb avere. The rules say that avere goes with transitive verbs. What are transitive verbs? Transitive verbs are verbs that are followed by a direct object. For example, I watch TV. You're watching what? Television. So usually they answer to the question what, who. On the other hand, in transitive verbs are not followed by a direct object. So for example, if I say I went to Paris, to Paris is not a direct object, but it indicates like a destination, okay, the place. In this case, you're going to use the auxiliary verb essere. So essere, you are going to use it with verbs of movements, for example, andare, verbs that indicate a change in state, for example, nascere, morire, diventare, 
reflexive verbs, lavarsi, pulirsi, or verbs that indicate immobility, for example, stare, rimanere. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry, but there are. There are not many, and unfortunately, you need to check example or you have to look up in the dictionary. For example, viaggiare indicates a movement, right? But in this case, you are going to use the auxiliary verb avere. Io ho viaggiato. Or there are verbs that they can be transitive and intransitive, so they can change auxiliary verbs. For example, correre. Correre indicates a movement, right? So if I say, io ho corso la maratona, in this case is transitive because the direct object is la maratona. But if you use this verb to indicate that you were late, so you were moving yourself quicker, sono corso da te, in this case is intransitive and you're going to use the auxiliary verb essere. Now we're going to learn the past participle. I tried to pronounce this word 300 times, so any English speaker out there, please correct me because I don't know, it doesn't come. It's like when you say what? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to learn this. Do you remember that in Italian the verbs ending in? Are, ere, ire. So now we are talking about regular verbs, okay? So the ending for the past participle is ato. For example, cantato, ere, uto, let's take uh, credere, creduto, ire, let's take pulire. Ito, pulito. You may wonder, shall I use avere? Yes, because those are transitive verbs. So, for example, I would say io ho cantato. Okay, or for example, io ho creduto. Io ho pulito. Perfect. Okay, something that I didn't mention <laughs> is that when you use the auxiliary verb essere, something is going to change in the past participle. Let's take for example, io sono andato. Andato is the past participle of andare. Very good. Something that maybe I didn't mention before, we have also irregular past participle. And unfortunately, you need to learn it. There are not many, okay? What is going to happen that when you use the essere, the past participle is going to agree in gender and in number with the subject or the subject pronoun in this case. So you are going to have masculine, feminine, singular, and plural. I told you that in the north we like to complicate matters. So this one is masculine, singular, plural, anda, ti, female, anda, andata, plurale, anda, Ok? Io sono andato. Noi siamo andati. Io sono andata. Noi siamo andate. Ok? And the good news is that the class is over. So I hope that this could clarify and explain the best way possible il passato prossimo. From the explanation, I know it looks like, oh, Jesus, but it's not. It's really easy, easy. You just need practice. Actually, it's more tricky il passato remoto with all the regular verbs, okay? Just to sum up, il passato prossimo, you can use avere o essere. 
But remember, if you use essere, you need to agree the past participle in number and in gender, so you can be masculine, singular, feminine, and plural, okay? The ending for the past participle regular verb, ato, uto, ito. We have also a regular verb that you must learn and just practice and have fun. If you have any question, please put in the comment section below or you can also email me to youritaliantutor01 at gmail.com. We'll play a few exercises just to practice, but if you can do more exercise, good for you. I will see you next class where we are going to conclude this past tense series. We are going to learn that kind of tenses that we use and that we don't use. No, I'm joking. We are going to use it. And, and then we go ahead. If you have any request, if you want to have a specific video, remember to let me know because I would be glad to do it. Now, study and see you next class. Bye for now.